Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this episode I'll give a detailed guide to baking normal maps and we'll see if we can come up with the perfect bake. I'd like to quickly thank all those that donate or are a Patreon and those that watch an advert for me. It's a great way to support me so thanks for that. And if you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. Okay so here's where we got up to last time we've unwrapped our low poly axe. Now someone asked a good question and that's why I didn't mark seams around the bottom and around the top and to be honest it's because I forgot and their argument was that you might get stretching and it's a good point so we can check the stretching by coming up to our UV editor over here under overlays we've got display stretch now it's a scale from blue to green so some of these turquoise areas you could argue there's a tiny bit of stretching but to be honest all this is absolutely fine let's see the difference it makes though so if I select that edge around there Q mark seams and the edge around the top here as well Q mark seams or control E mark seams if you haven't put it in your quick favorites okay select all unwrap see how different that is and you can now see these new top bits here and here and they've got a little bit less stretching someone else was saying that my UVs are too close to each other so these islands so in these spots around here and it's a reasonable point if you ever want to reduce the resolution of your maps you have to make sure they are a nice distance apart when I'm using 2k maps which I'm going to use that will be absolutely fine but their point was if you want to reduce them and that's a really good point so just make sure they're a nice distance apart you can easily just go around making sure there's a nice gap in between them all and I think they were talking also that um, some game engines do that automatically I'm not really up to speed with that sort of thing and the inner workings of game engines so it's just good practice anyway and make sure they're all a nice good distance apart like this okay so we're ready for baking now what I'm going to need to do is to create a texture to bake onto and we can do that in the UV image editor just by pressing new and I'll call this axe norms because we're going to start with a normal map because that's the quickest map to bake therefore we can see whether we've got any problems nice and easily I'll change the resolution to 2048 by 2048 high resolution means more detail and therefore more computing power I think 2k is going to be absolutely fine and we don't need the alpha because there's no transparency and I'll press OK so that creates a black texture and we can see it in the background there but before baking we need to create a material as well for our axe so I'm going to pull down a new window that's probably the most difficult thing to do as a beginner you come to the corner there and wait till your cross hatches change and then click and drag and end up with 10 million windows and we change this to the shader editor just up here I press N to get rid of that tab and I'll maximize this window so you can see what's going on within it now I've already got a material for the low poly axe but I'm actually going to name it axe LP so we know it's the axe material and I'll change my color back to white so the axe has a material now but we need to put that image in here so blender knows what to bake to so shift a to add texture image texture bring that in and if I go to this drop down menu here I can find the axe normals texture that I just made so I'll click on that we don't need to hook it up to anything eventually it will come down here now normal maps color space is always non-color data so we can change that here don't forget to change that it will look really weird if you haven't got that selected I don't think it actually makes any difference whether you change it before or after you bake the texture though okay so control spacebar to go back to the previous layout okay so it's time for baking now if you have your low poly axe as separate objects it gets a bit more tricky because you have to go into each individual object like the axe head first and then select the low poly axe head bake those then the strap then the handle and so on but because the axe low poly is all one object we can select all our high poly objects so I'll view those with my eye there axe head we don't need the torus yet axe handle lower strap top strap and that's the other torus which we don't need so we select all those high poly objects and then the axe low poly last so that's now the active object and we're baking to the active object from all the other objects now in order to find the baking panel we go to the render settings here or the render properties I'll just bring this up slightly and you must be in cycles for this to work if you're not in cycles you won't see the baking panel down here so I'll open up the baking panel 
and we've got lots of options. The bake type, we're going to do normals first. And like I say, that's the quickest to do out of what we're going to bake. So it's the best one to start with in case we have any issues we can kind of play around and rebake. Then we scroll down to selected to active. So we want these selected to go to this active one here. So we tick that one and I'll open up that dialog box there. Now we haven't got a cage object. If I do tick that, which you're not going to, if you have a separate object that surrounds your mesh, then you can use a cage and it can give a better result. And there's more about that in my video about perfect baking, which you can find in the description. So I'll turn that off. What we want is the extrusion distance. So if I just zoom in and explain that slightly, the distance that this high poly mesh here is sticking through the low poly mesh is what we want to reach with our extrusion. So it's going out a little bit. So it's kind of making its own little cage out from the mesh slightly. Without extrusion turned up, these blobs would appear with anomalies because it's always looking inside the low poly for the high poly mesh. And that's why extrusion is very useful because we can come out really slightly with our low poly. So what you can do if you want to know how far to bring the extrusion out is you can use your measure tool just here. And it's really, really minimal. So I can just measure across there slightly. And you can see it's 0.01 roughly meters. So I'll delete that by pressing X, go back to my selection tool so it doesn't confuse anything. And I can turn this up to 0.01. And that should grab everything. You don't want to just turn this up loads because Let's say in here, if we extrude this out, the low poly mesh, these two would overlap and therefore you'd get problems. So that's why you have to be a bit careful with how high you go with the extrusion. But 0.01 should work nicely. Things like the margin is how far out from the islands the new image will bake. So we can get a nice ring around our islands of texture, which will help us if we ever have to reduce the texture resolution and so forth in game engines like I was talking about earlier. Now the clear image option means it will clear the image that's there already and rebake a new one. If you're doing lots of separate objects, you need to turn that off because you'll need to do them one by one and you'll need to keep the image. Okay, so that's all the settings. The main thing is normal, select it to active and turn the extrusion up the distance you need it. Now before you press bake, just double check that the Axlo Poly is the active object. I selected it last in the list and it's highlighted yellow here and the others are highlighted orange. I'm actually in edit mode, it doesn't make any difference. But what you must double check is that you have the texture over here selected because that's the texture it's going to bake to. If you have other textures in here and you have one of them selected, it will bake to those. Even though it says axe norms here and it looks like it's going to bake to this, it will bake to what's ever active in here. So make sure that axe norms is selected. If you can't see that texture, then you might have forgotten to select your axe last it should be the material for the active object, which is the Axlo Poly. Okay, so with that selected, we can press bake. Now, I've got a warning message here. Object Axlo Poly is not enabled for rendering. So it looks like it's enabled for rendering because we can see it here. However, if I go to the filters up here and go to disable in render and click that one and then come back out, we can see that my Axlo Poly has been turned off from rendering. And I must've done that at some point. So you tick on that it all must be available in render view. Now actually there is one other thing that I forgot. Let's go to object mode and I've got everything selected. The Axlo Poly is still the last object, therefore the active object. But what I didn't do was right click and shade smooth. If you don't do that, you'll end up with a flat bake. So the high poly might have slight bumps in it where it's flat shaded rather than smooth shaded. So make sure everything has smooth shaded turned on and now we can bake. Okay, it says no active image found in material 003. You sometimes get warning messages like that, especially if you're hooked up to a material, it might say there's a loop or something like that, but then it suddenly starts baking and you're okay. I'll speed this bit up a bit. Now you can see down here that it goes back to 0% every now and again. That's because we've got several high poly objects, so it's baking all those individually. And our bake has appeared down here. So I'll press control spacebar so we can take a look at that. And that looks a pretty good bake. If you have any sort of brown textures and really bright green textures, then you've got problems and you might need to change that extrusion distance, which I talked about earlier. But you should be able to see the details of the axe coming through here. And it should be fairly smooth. I'm zooming in, you can sort of see the pixels around here, but from this distance, which is what we're going to see it, it looks great. Now you can see around the edges just here, it looks a little bit odd. And that's just where my overlap is. So if I go into edit mode with my axe, you can see that it's baked 16 pixels outside of my islands. 
which is really useful because you won't see any visible seams. Okay, so let's go back and I'll go back into object mode and we're going to see what it looks like. So let's select just the axe low poly, hide the high poly for now, and we'll hook up the normal maps to test it. So I'll zoom into this with control spacebar and we need to hook the normal map up to the normal map slot. You can't just do this because it needs an extra node in here. So shift A to add and it's under vector. Vector, normal map, not normal, but normal map and just slide that in the middle. So color to color and then normal to normal. You can't just automatically attach a yellow to a blue. Double check that it's on non-color data. Control space bar to come out of here. Up into look dev mode will be fine. And we can see what looks to be a really nice high poly mesh. But in fact, it's the low poly with a normal map, which is just incredible. And that's a really nice bake. If you have any sort of weird gray spots, then you might need to go back and redo your normal map with a different extrusion distance. Last thing to do is make sure you save this image. It won't save by itself. And I'm going to call this Axe Norms and press save. Okay, so that's baking normal maps for our axe. Hopefully you're still all enjoying this. Any comments, let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.